the sage and the mouse once a sage was sitting under a tree a crow came and sat on the same tree it had a small mouse in its beak when the crow opened its mouth to eat the mouse it fell on the sage now the sage was a kind man he put the little mouse safely near him one day when the mouse was sitting in the sun with the sage a big cat wanted to eat it the mouse wanted to become a cat it asked the sage the sage smiled and changed the mouse into a cat some days went by the little mouse was happy to become a cat after a few days tommy the dog chased the mouse turned cat it now wanted to become a dog the cat was changed into a dog the mouse turned cat turned dog followed the sage everywhere but one day it saw a big tiger the tiger growled at it the mouse turned cat turned dog ran to save its life it wanted to become a tiger the sage turned it into a tiger the mouse turned cat turned dog turned tiger stood in front of the sage he was now a wild animal he jumped on the sage to kill him the sage was a wise man he knew that a tiger could kill anybody he was prepared for the attack he turned it back into the little mouse that it was do you think the mouse was happy now the bus ride rani and mummy walk to the bus stop rani is excited a big yellow bus arrives six pairs of friendly eyes look out of the bus rani climbs in conductor uncle helps her up the steps She waves goodbye to her mummy. She takes a seat near a window. The bus stops many times. Other children get in. Socks, the kitten. Madhu was a very happy 6-year-old child. She made friends easily. Everyone in her neighborhood was her friend. All the grandpas and grandmas, uncles and aunties, didis and bhaiyas, and babies in their prams. She had a smile for everyone. But she was scared of animals, both small and big, pet or stray. She wouldn't go near any puppy or kitten bird or calf one day on her way to school she heard a kitten mewing loudly something told her that the kitten was in pain she went towards the sound very scared herself she saw the kitten had hurt its paw and was crying Madhu started crying too. Without thinking, she went closer to the kitten. Closer and closer. The kitten looked at her and Madhu sat down beside the kitten. She tied her handkerchief on the kitten's paw to stop the bleeding. The kitten stopped crying. Madhu stopped crying. She forgot that she had to go to school. 
After some time, Madhu picked up the kitten gently in her arms and took her home. Her family was surprised and happy. They nursed the kitten and soon it started running. Madhu named it Socks. Madhu and Socks are best friends now. Ananya's first birthday. This is the letter Tina wrote to her grandmother. Dear Dadi Ma, Today I went to Ananya's house. It was her first birthday. I gave her a big doll as a present. The doll can open and shut her eyes. I played with other children. There were so many colorful balloons. There was a big bouncy dinosaur too. We had fun jumping on it. Later, we sang happy birthday and Ananya cut the cake. We all ate yummy snacks. There was fruit salad and potato chips and sandwiches. I was sad to say goodbye when it was time to go. I had so much fun today. I hope all my friends come when I give my birthday party next month. Oh, what fun we will have then. I hope to see you soon, Dadi Ma. Love, Tina. Amy's Book Amy is a little girl. She lives with her parents. They bring many books and toys for her. Amy likes to read books. Amy also likes to play with her toys. It is Amy's birthday today. Her father gives her a book. Amy reads the book. The book is very nice. Amy takes the book to school. Her friends want to read the book. Amy gives the book to Mary. Mary takes the book home. Next day, Mary cannot find the book. The book is lost. Amy is very sad. She wants her book back. She walks back home. Mary is very upset. She does not want to see her friend unhappy. She searches in her bag again. She finds the book in her bag. Mary is happy. She calls Amy. She has the book in her hand. She gives the book to Amy. Amy is happy. She keeps the book in her bag. She does not want to lose it again. The Rainbow Fairies One day, the black clouds and the white clouds decided to have a race. They just wanted to have some fun. Their mother, the east wind, tried to stop them. She told them the time was not right. But they did not listen to her. They came out into the open sky and one, two, three, 
the race began. They had a lot of fun, chasing, dodging, teasing, shouting, and waving as they raced each other in the sky. But then it happened, just as their mother had warned. The white clouds and the black clouds dashed against each other and bumped their heads. They began to cry. The black clouds were full of water. All their tears started falling on the earth. Father Sun saw this. He told the clouds not to cry. He calmed them down. He then sent his little fairies to dry their tears. Seven fairies came, one after another. The first one wore a violet dress. The second one wore an indigo dress. The third one came in blue. The fourth in green. The fifth in yellow. The sixth in orange. And the last one in red. They wiped and dried the tears of the clouds. And soon their work was over. But their gowns had become wet. The sun was shining brightly now. They hung their gowns upon the rays of the sun for drying. This is what we call a rainbow. The Little Red Hen Little Red Hen lived on a farm with her five little chicks. She worked very hard every day. She used to scratch the barnyard from morning to night looking for food for herself and her chicks. She was not alone on the farm. A dog, a cat and a duck also lived there. But they were lazy. They used to sit around the barnyard and watch the hen work and scratch. One day, the hen found some corn. She was very happy and decided to plant it. Who will help me plant it? She asked her neighbors. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the duck. So the hen planted the corn all by herself. The corn grew and grew and soon it was tall and strong and ready to be cut. Who will help me cut the corn? She asked her neighbors again. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the duck. Then I will, said the hen. I will cut the corn myself. Then the hen had to take the corn to the mill to be ground into flour. She asked if anyone would help, but they all said no. So she took the corn to the mill all by herself. The hen decided to bake a cake with the corn flour. Who will help me bake the cake? She asked everyone. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the duck. Then I will said the hen. I will bake the cake myself. At last, the fresh warm cake was ready. And the dog and the cat and the duck gathered around the cake, hoping for a nice big piece. Who will eat my cake? asked the hen. I will, said the dog. I will, said the cat. I will, said the duck. No, you will not, 
said the hen. My five little chicks and I will eat the cake. And they did. Mr. Boon and Mr. Goon This is the story of two friends, Mr. Boon and Mr. Goon. See what happens one day when they meet. Two friends, Mr. Boon and Mr. Goon, who cannot hear very well. Setting a street. Mr. Boon is going to the market with a bag. He sees Mr. Goon. Mr. Boon says, How are you, Mr. Goon? Mr. Goon says, Oh, Mr. Boon, how are you? What are you saying? Cows are few. Where are the cows? Mr. Boon, shouting, I did not say cows are few. I said, how are you? Mr. Goon says, I am fine. But why are you shouting in my ear? Where are you taking this bag? Mr. Boon says, I am going to the market to buy some rice. Mr. Goon says, Mice? Why do you want mice in your house? They will nibble at everything. Mr. Boon says, I said rice, not mice. Mr. Goon says, Oh, ice? You are going to buy ice? Mr. Boon says, getting angry. Mr. Goon, please excuse me. I must go now. I have to go to the market. Mr. Goon says, What? You have to bring a basket? Now, why do you need a basket? Mr. Boon says, Oh, my God, I am going. Starts running. Mr. Goon says, Mr. Boon, please wait. They both run out. Ali and Ami Ali lived with his Ami in a small house. Ami took great care of him. When Ali was very young, his father had died. Ali was very fond of his Ami. Ami was a seamstress. She stitched clothes in order to send Ali to school. Ali knew that they did not have enough money. But Ami always gave him whatever he needed. It was the festival of Eid. Ali was feeling very happy. Every year, Ami gave him some money to spend. This year, she had given him 15 rupees. Ali went to the Eid fair. The fair was very big. There were many people at the fair. His friends, Rahman and Romi, were eating ice cream. Some children were sitting on the giant wheel. Ali wanted to buy slippers for his Ammi. He went from shop to shop, but the slippers were very expensive. Ali did not eat anything. He did not sit on the giant wheel. Ali had only 15 rupees. He knew Ami needed slippers. Her slippers had become very old. Ali was sad. It was evening. He was tired and hungry. He could not buy the slippers for Ami. He came back home. 
Ali kept the money in a box. He would buy the slippers next year. The money would be doubled by then. Johnny gets a straw hat. This is the story of a little girl called Anita and her toy horse called Johnny. Anita and Johnny were inseparable. They were always together. They ate together. They slept together. They even shopped together. Whenever Anita wanted anything, she would say, Johnny wants a chocolate or Johnny wants to go to the park. If she did not want to do anything, she would say, Johnny does not want to study or Johnny does not want to sleep just now. One day, Anita's parents had to go out of town for some work. They would be gone for a week. They could not leave Anita alone at home. They decided to leave her at her grandma's place. Johnny does not want to go, Anita said. But they have such a beautiful cottage next to the beach. You will love it there. You can make new friends with children on the beach, her mother tried to tell her. Anita had never seen the sea before, but she still did not want to go. Early on Saturday morning, Anita sat in the back of the car with Johnny. Mummy and Papa sat in the front. Anita's little suitcase was put in the boot. The day was bright and sunny and a cool breeze was blowing. But Anita was still not happy. She soon went off to sleep with Johnny sleeping beside her. It was evening by the time they reached the beach close to Grandma's house. As Anita and Johnny got down from the car, they saw a lot of sand and blue water. Anita was seeing all this for the first time. She liked it. Then she saw Grandma and Grandpa walking slowly towards them. Grandpa was carrying ice candies for everyone. They were wearing straw hats. Before Anita could smile at them, she saw two horses trotting towards them. Even the horses were wearing straw hats. Their hats had little holes for their ears to poke out. Anita smiled. Look Johnny, even your grandparents are coming to meet you. She ran towards her grandparents and gave them a hug. That night, as Grandma came to kiss her goodnight, she brought with her a very small straw hat with poles. It was for Johnny, his very own straw hat. Anita was very happy. Thank you, Grandma. And Johnny says he loves his straw hat. Now Anita wanted to live with her grandparents forever and Johnny nodded his head in agreement.